Hi, in this example we're going to learn about cumulative distribution functions. And in this particular example, what I want to do is start off with a cumulative distribution function, often called a CDF, and convert it to a probability mass function. So here's the particular example. Um, we are given uh, a cumulative distribution function. And it is written here, and let me just remind you what the cumulative distribution function is. It's the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x. Okay, so that is what the CDF is. And I think it's nice here to start off with an example picture of what the CDF looks like, because then we can actually see where the random variable x is gaining mass or probability. So let me draw um, a graph here of the CDF. Um, and we'll go ahead and go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. This is the x-axis. This is going to be capital F of x, the CDF. And again, the CDF is the amount of area, or if you want to say probability, up to a given point. And so let's just label this. Let's go by 2s, 0.2, um, 0.4, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, and uh, 1, right? Because the, the, the largest capital F can be as 1. I mean, once a random variable picks up all of its mass um, or probability, it's, it hits 1. Okay, so we go up here now. Um, for x is less than negative 2, this random variable has not picked up any probability. So coming from the left to negative 2, I just have 0. There's no probability there. And even at negative 2, I haven't picked up any probability yet up until negative 2, so that's why I have an open circle. So I think students sometimes get confused what this x less than negative 2 means. It means if you t choose any x in this range and put it in this statement, the probability x is less than or equal, in this case, let's choose negative um, 3, the probability my random variable x is less than or equal to negative 3 is 0. Uh, I haven't picked up any mass again. Okay, so at negative 2, I actually, we actually make a jump here. You can see we go from 0 to 0 0.2. So at negative 2, we're going to jump up here to 0 0.2. And that means actually at negative 2, I'm gaining mass. And I draw a closed circle here because at negative 2, I actually have this probability at this point. And anywhere in between negative 2 and 0, I'm not picking up any mass or probability. So you can see I'm just going to go along this flat line up until 0. And I have an open circle there because I don't actually pick up my mass or probability until I hit 0. OK, so at um, 0, I'm going to make another jump here. So you can see I'm jumping from 0.2 to 0.7. And that's right here. I have my closed circle. Because at 0, I actually pick up that probability. So coming from the left of 0, I have an open circle because I haven't picked up the probability yet. Once I hit 0, coming from the right, then I do have a closed circle. So again, this is saying take anybody in this range, for example, like um, the value 1. The probability my random variable is less than or equal to 1 is 0 0.7. I've picked up 0 0.7 mass or probability up to that point. So notice them between 0 and 2, we're just riding on a flat line line here till we get to um, 2 and we have another open circle. Um, for x is bigger than or equal to 2, uh, you put any number bigger than or equal to 2 into the statement and you've already picked up all your probability. So you can see here at 2 we're just going to have, uh, again, my closed circle and we're going to go on forever this way. I mean, in other words, if I put in a value bigger than or equal to 2, such as 5, the probability my random variable takes on a value less than or equal to 5 is 1, because I only take on probability at negative 2, 0, and 2. So by 5, I've picked up all my mass or area. So the total um, probability we can pick up is 1. So let's go ahead now and write the probability mass function. So um, we call that f of x, little f of x. And just as a reminder, this is the probability that x is equal to x. I mean, that's the difference between little f is the probability x is x, and capital F is the probability x is less than or equal to x. So let's go ahead and write this as a piecewise function, um, f of x is equal to, well, it only gains probability at three values. So at x is negative 2, we made a jump. At x is 0, we made a jump on the cumulative graph. And at x equals 2. 
And so now we're just figuring how much that jump was when we hit negative 2. So you can see right here, um, the probability x is negative 2 is a jump of 0.2. So that's the probability at negative 2. At 0, we made a jump from 0.2 to 0.7. So right here is actually the amount of probability we have at 0, which is 0.5. And then we hit 2, we make our last little jump here of 0.3. And, you know, you'll notice that f of x is a valid probability mass function or density function. Um, it adds to 1, so everything is nice. And uh, so we, we're finished. We have our mass function, and we've written it out nicely. Uh, it's defined at three values. So let's just recap what we did. We started with a cumulative distribution function, a function that tells us how much probability is up to a point x. And then from that, we convert it to a probability mass function, which tells us how much probability is at a given value of x. So I hope the picture helps. For me, the, the conversion from a CDF to a probability mass function, the picture really seals it for me where we're picking up that probability. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk again soon.